Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for your time today. And um, I'm going to start by asking you some questions. Sure. And thank you for your review, by the way. I saw your review. It's pretty oh, thank good. Thank you. Um, can you start by introducing yourself, telling us a bit about your background and what inspired you to become a writer? Sure. Um, I am Fenderson Jelly Clark. I sometimes go as P. Jelly Clark. And I write uh, forms of science fiction and speculative fiction. So I write fantasy, I write science fiction, and I normally write it for adults. Um, but recently, I wanted to start taking my hand at writing it for younger readers. Um, and so that's where I am now. I'm with my first book, of course, of any song that you brought me here to talk about. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what inspired you to write a Beanie song? Oh, well, I always wanted to write a fantasy story. And I hadn't really, even though I did a lot of adult fantasy, I had adult science fiction, I didn't really have a chance to write a fantasy story yet. And I decided I wanted my first fantasy story because I love fantasy so much to be for younger readers because when I was that age, I was really into fantasy. It was all I read was fantasy books. And so I wanted to write a book that would be something that I would have liked when I was younger. And so that inspired me to write this story. Mm -hmm. Well, then that shows that you have great taste because I certainly enjoyed the book. Thank you. How'd you come up with the title? Yeah, so... From you know, reading a book, you know that a Benny has this song, right? Mm -hmm. And I went, because the song was so, I didn't have a title at first, but when I wrote the book, I was like, okay, so the song is the center of everything. And in a way, as you know, from the book, the song is like her telling the story about her life and what she's doing in her family. And so I said, what's more important than that? And so when I came up with a title, a Benny song just seems to be the perfect title mm -hmm. because the song is so important. And then I wanted people to figure out, okay, what's the deal with the song as they read and they learn, oh, this is why the song is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like the way you explained that. It's so it's like she's singing the song of her life through the book. Yeah. Yeah. And so in some ways the book is a Benny song. That's like my, my also an idea in there that when you finish reading the book, you've kind of read part of a Benny song. It's like, she's telling this to you, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And inside the song, she also includes that she learns the song, which is actually pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, she does. Why did you choose the name Ab Abini? So, you know, the story has a lot of, is really set with a lot of um, West African uh, culture. Mm -hmm. And I was looking around for a name and I actually happened to know an Afini and I know an Abeni. And so I just like those two names. <laughs> and so I was like, should I go with Afeni? Should I go with Abeni? And I like those names. And I love like the name itself means like a gift, right? And and like, and mm -hmm. so I said, oh, I have to use this name. And it just, it was perfect. Like once I knew her name was Abeni, I knew she couldn't be anybody else. Uh-huh. Would you like to learn magic like Abini learns from Auntie Asha? Of course. <laughs> I want to be in a house with all those rooms too, where I can go into yeah. a room and all this stuff is here or some rooms might lead somewhere else. Yeah, who wouldn't? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> Definitely. What sort of magic would you learn? Um, let me see. I would like, I would like some of those pots. Oh. Right? Except I would like them to not be as mean as they hurt her. Yeah. But I would love to be able to... Yeah, I would like to be able to talk to inanimate objects like a pot or like my desk and mm. ask it how it is and what's going on. I'd love to have that ability, right? Um, uh -huh. Just so long as they're, they're not as mean as they were to her. True. Um, why did you choose a goat man instead of another creature? Oh, well... You know, one reason is no matter where you go in the world, everybody tends goats. There's always yeah. some people who tend goats, right? No matter where you are. And there is something about goats that shouldn't be scary. They're goats. They're cute, right? So people like to eat them, what have you, but they shouldn't be scary. And so I like the idea that taking something that shouldn't be scary 
and then making it scary, right? Because at first you're like, a goat's not scary, but he is frightening, right? And so right, right. that's why I went with uh, a goat man. And then you find out at the end, I don't want to give it away, why he's mm -hmm. called the goat man, right? That, that that was his life as well. So yeah, yeah I, I like the idea. I think mm -hmm. if I named him like, the lion man or the alligator man those are scary right those are already yeah but those are know, like just enough, yeah not really but a goat i would have never thought of a goat man i think that's very original and Thank i'm you. i i appreciate the way you managed to sort of take something like you said take something not scary and turn it scary yeah yeah that's my favorite those are the things that scare me like if somebody takes something, like I always say, like what scares me is if you're playing a video game and then you're in a school and there's nobody there, that's scary to me because schools should be full of people, right? And if I'm in a school and, and it's absolutely empty, that's scary. That's what's scary to me. Well, I mean, I think jump scares scare me because then yeah. when something just comes into my face, I'm like, what is it? Yeah, it shouldn't be there, right? And then yeah, you don't exactly. even know, you don't even have any time to prepare. Even if it's just a cat. True. You jump, yeah. But they can like scratch your face. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. What kind of spirit is Auntie Asha or Asha as a beanie calls her later on? Um, you know, she's an she's an interesting spirit. I don't want to give it all away, right? But she's very old. Um, she's probably older than most other spirits. But she looks more like a person, right? And spirits can look like in the book they can look like anything. Like you meet porcupine girls and panther. So spirits can look like plants, but she just looks like a person. So you can't tell, but I don't want to give it away. Of course, that she's not a person. And we see how she's not people when she, when she goes from auntie Asha to the other Asha. All right. And so, yeah, she's, she's, but she's a very powerful and old spirit. Um, but at the same time, as you see, she can also be very innocent. All right. And sure. childlike. Yeah. True. I think that if you turned your book into a movie, the part where Auntie Asha reincarnates or something, yeah. that would be a really dramatic part. Yeah, I think it would be. That is the part of the book that when I read it, it still gets me. Like, because you're like, oh, She's no. And then like, coming what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think you're right. I think that would be the most. That's why I'm, it's like in the book, I call it book two. I put part two of the book because... That was so big. I needed people to like take a break, take a breath. <laughs> I hope that when people read that, they want to read more. Like what? And they like she's she's young like, now. What on earth is she gonna do now? She still has to save yeah. like the entire village. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What measurement is a harvest festival compared to years? Because I noticed um, Abini's twelve yeah. harvest festivals old. It seemed like it's a year. Yeah, it's like a year. I didn't want to. I was trying to find a way how. People like before modern age and always use words like years, you know, they base it on mm -hmm. crops like or something's happening in the sky. And so I thought harvest was good because harvest festivals, are, again, one of those things that people have all around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what like in the United States, that's kind of what Thanksgiving and some are like related to and things like that next to harvest festivals. And so mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, it's yearly. So saying that she's had her 12th harvest is saying like she's 12 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where did you get the nickname for Abini being the Rainbringer? Oh, the Rainbringer. I just wanted to, I wanted to give her an interesting backstory. And I just had fun telling a story about, as you saw in the book, that she gets this nickname because she happens to be born right before the, there was a big drought and they weren't having a lot of rain. Yeah. And when she's born, they have rain. And so I like the idea that everybody in the village knows who she is because they're like oh you were the kid who were born right when there was rain and so it's like lucky it's very lucky to name you rainbringer because you bring fortune and you bring yeah. rain yeah and i think rainbringer is a better name than kid who was born right after rain. <laughs> yeah. but it's yeah. also something that she has to live with and you know benny kind of likes it but as she's getting older she's kind of getting annoyed by it because she's like i'm not the little rainbringer anymore i'm i'm 12 right i'm gonna be 13 soon and so one of the things is what happens when all the grown-ups know you know this nickname for you that's based on when you were a baby but you're not a baby anymore and they still want to call you that right and so you can tell a benny is kind of annoyed <laughs> at the at the word though she also likes it and so she quietly likes it but she's also a little annoyed yeah yeah, I do that sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Can you um, relate to that? Yeah, I think that's something people can relate to. 
Well, not really the nickname, but I can relate to being annoyed, but secretly liking it. <laughs> okay. Mm. Um, what are the inspiration for the porcupine, porcupine spirit, Naomi, and the panther spirit? Zania, Zania yeah, Zania. Um, okay. No, I, so I wanted um, a Benny to meet new people. Um, part of, I think back when I was that age, um, about the friends I made, and for instance, I think back like fourth, fifth grade and sixth, seventh grade, like especially going into middle school and meeting new people and trying to get along. And so I wanted her to be introduced to these brand new people, but they're not really people, right? And she finds out they're much older than her, but they act, they act though like they're her age, right? And so I wanted I to give her people like that. To find that out about Sonia. Yeah, like they, they're all like, oh, I'm, I'm 60, I'm 80 years old. And she's like, what? But they behave like they're her age. So they're, they're still in her age group because they're spirits. But and she yeah. also has to deal with the fact that one, they they are all stronger than her because they have a lot of magic, right? They can all do things that she can't. Um, so how does that make her feel like, OK, it was one thing when I was with Auntie Asha, but now I'm with these two sure. and everybody here can do something and I can't, right? And then not everybody, like while Naomi might be fun to get along with, Zania is not as easy to get along with. Hey, and so well, I wanted to, <laughs> yeah, you can say that again, definitely. And so I wanted to give her somebody who was challenging because we've all had that. I think I had that when I was younger. I still have it as a grown up, right? There are always people that I might have to work with, that I have to go to school with, or that I, in my family, <laughs> that well, I, I have... don't always get along well with. Uh -huh. but, how, but we have to get, we have to find a way to get along. So I wanted to give a Benny that challenge too. Mm -hmm. I sort of have those. I have, my brother is like Zania and my sister is like <laughs> Naomi. She's easy to get okay. along with, but sometimes. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. I could see that, yeah. Yeah. I have a sister who I think was both too. I think she was, my sister was both Naomi sometimes and Zania. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. Can you tell us about your process of writing the book? Oh yeah, sure. So, I mean, the process is kind of similar to how I write most books is I get an idea and I sit with the idea for a long time. That means I daydream a lot. I don't know who still daydreams, but I was, I was a big daydreamer as a kid. I'd be walking through the halls at school and I'd be thinking, what if a spaceship came or what if a dinosaur came here right now? And so when I get an idea, I daydream. I daydream while I'm driving or while I'm at, at home washing dishes or mowing the lawn and I'm just thinking about the story. And I think about it for a long time. I think about scenes, about characters. And then when I'm ready, I start writing down notes. And I start writing things down like, oh, this, this is what I think I want to do. Uh -huh. And when I have all of that, that's when I start writing. And so by the time I start writing, like the story has been in my head for a long time. Um, and that's my process, really. Uh, I just make sure that when I start writing it, that I'm really thought about the story a lot and that I'm really into doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seems like a lot of authors that I've interviewed, like, think about it. And some say, don't think about it, just write it. Um, I think I'm gonna try both out because I have honestly no clue. Yeah, you're gonna try books, both out. Yeah. Because there are amazing books from both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Some people can some people can just not think about it long and just go. And me, I have to think about it. I gotta write my notes out. But even then, it doesn't matter. You're still going to find a part in the book that no matter how well you planned it, the story starts going its own way. And suddenly you have new characters that you didn't have before and new adventures. And that's how a good story is written, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, one time when I was drafting a, um, starting to draft a book, um, I kept on thinking about the interview questions that I ask actual authors. And I think, well, there's this question, how am I gonna answer to that? Yeah. And then I sort of base my book off them sometimes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's your book going to be about? Well, I haven't gotten to the details yet, but um, it's going to be about um, a boy. I haven't decided his name. I changed it so many times. It's annoying when I have to. <laughs> but it's going to be about a boy who goes to a camp. And for some reason, I keep on thinking of a big, large tree in the middle of the camp. Okay. And then, then yeah. yeah. Go There's ahead. There's going to be a problem with the camp. He has to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And 
there are going to be a lot of challenges along the way. Okay. That sounds good. Is there going to be any magic or anything? Well, weird? actually, that's the thing. I haven't gotten to it. Okay. I think, we'll I think if the story goes the way it's starting now, mm-hmm. then like in that front page where they have those details, it's going to be a normal, ordinary boy who finds this wow place. Yeah, that's great. No, that sounds perfect. Yeah, thank that you. Sounds perfect. It sounds like a great story. I can't wait to read it. And when, when you figure out the name, you'll know it. You'll be like, that's absolutely the name. True. And everything will be fine from there, yeah. Yeah, I think a Beanie song really fits your book too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's her best. That's the best name for her. She's she's a perfect True. Beanie. True. <laughs> um, are there any interesting or memorable experiences that happened in your life that influence in the book? Oh, let me think. Um, certainly, like I said, I had people who I had friends who were not always good friends, and <laughs> we ended up becoming good friends. And so, like the Zania Naomi relationship is kind of based off of that. Certainly. Um, my grandmother was a lot like Auntie Asha. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, not that I knew, not that if she knew magic, she didn't teach it to me, but she, she would talk about things. Like she would yeah. tell me like, oh, don't like do this because something might happen or you might upset the tree because the tree's like alive. And, you know, at night, make sure you walk like a certain way. And so uh, there was a bit of my grandmother in uh, Auntie Asha as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're saying like you're, um, she's superstitious? She is, she was definitely superstitious. No, <laughs> yes, <laughs> she was definitely superstitious. And we come from, this is when I lived uh, in the Caribbean in an island called Trinidad. And mm-hmm. yeah, she was, um, if she would say stuff like, don't pick, I couldn't, don't pick mangoes at night because you'll make the tree angry or, you know. <laughs> Or if dogs were barking at night, she would she would start closing all the windows and she would say, well, the witches are out. And I'd say, what? And I was really small and I was like, the witches? <laughs> I was like four and I was scared to death that the witches were going to come and get me. <laughs> okay, that's that. Yeah. How long did it take to write the book? I think this book took me, um, and here's the trick, here's the thing. I wrote this book a long time ago. That's another thing to think about writing. A uh, book you may write may not be the first book you publish, but I wrote this book before I wrote all of my other books that I published, my adult books. Um, and I think, I want to say it took me about six to eight months. Okay, that's that's fair. But yeah. that's also surprising because there are some books who are, I have interviewed some authors whose books are like really thin and takes a lot longer, but I think everyone has their ways. You're absolutely correct. There's, it's not a race. Everybody has their, and this was a time when I was writing a lot for fun. This was before I was published. And so I wasn't writing like it was work and I'm like, oh, I got to get it done. I was writing more so I want it whenever I want to write, I'll write and I'll finish it when I finish it. So I wasn't in a rush. Mm-hmm. So it was fun to write. But yeah, everybody writes at a different pace. Mm-hmm. It's very true that it's not a co- contest, though my brother no. would want it to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, what message or theme do you hope readers, young readers, would learn from the book? You know, I, I, I mean, there are some, there are a lot of serious themes in there. I don't want to give them away because, again, it'll give away the story, especially coming to the end. It'll give away the story. But I, I suppose one main theme I want them to think about is how someone like a Benny who is, if you're thrown, if, if, if you're thrown into things that you don't expect, when the unexpected happens, even when tragedy happens, that um, things can get better with time, right? That you can persevere and weather it. And even if it seems like it's the worst at the moment when it's happening, there's always a tomorrow, hopefully, and, you know, things can get better. And that's one of Abeni's things, right? She's she's gone through something really terrible when her village is attacked. Okay. Um, and she she can't see that she's then going to make these amazing friends and have these mm-hmm. adventures. She can't possibly see any of that's going to happen. Um, but it does, right? It just takes time. And it's a good thing that she didn't give up, you know, very early on. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I wonder if we're characters in a book. And the real Who's world is somewhere, yeah. somewhere is someone's writing so it. much different than this. I, I feel the same about Lego worlds. I mean, they think their world is normal. They don't think anything yeah. is real. So who knows? I might be in a, some sort of world right now. 
you might yeah we might be in our own dimension where people read books in another dimension i don't know the books read us who knows if you could give one piece of advice to kids who would want to become authors what would it be oh it would be to write right now mm -hmm. go ahead and start writing i know people think about writing but i always tell people it's great to think about writing please do think about it think about it and then make a decision to start writing it's never too early to start i was writing when i was much younger and I had no idea I wanted to be an author. I just, I was just writing. I was writing and I would make little comic books and stories and staple them together for my sister, for my friends and family. And I think even though back then I didn't think about being an author, I was just doing it because I like to read. And so, because I like to read so much, I wanted to make my own things. Mm -hmm. um, so I would tell them like, uh, start writing. And then my second thing is read, read a lot, uh, read, read as much as you can. I don't know anyone who's a writer who doesn't also read. You can't mm -hmm. skip. You can't skip to writing if you haven't read. <laughs> it's simple as that. You you have to you have to read. So those are my two things. Um, when you're ready to start writing, uh, and my second thing is read. Read as much as you can because that's where your ideas are going to come from. I love the way you put it in that way. Um, and also, I think that what people don't notice is that they use reading every single day. <laughs> you have to read the um, sign in driving so that you know where it goes, what the sign is. Um, you have to you read a manual to make something. You have to you have to read that um, notice that comes on. You have to read your emails, and you have to read a mm -hmm. recipe. I think that even if you, even if people don't know, they read words every single day. Mm -hmm. I think there's nobody who can say they have never read in their life. Unless they're shut right. down in this place where there's no letters. Should be horrible. <laughs> Should be horrible. Yeah, that would be horrible. Yes. Uh huh. So if you could travel back in time and give yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? Oh, man. It would be... I think early, if I was really younger, it would be like, hey, you can be a writer because I wasn't thinking it, <laughs> right? So that's one. But mm -hmm. also, I think if I if I travel back not too far, but to talk about myself when I first started writing seriously, it would be to have more fun, to remember that uh, you're writing for the fun of it, like, and don't lose that part, mm -hmm. right? You should you should be enjoying what you're writing. If you're writing and you're not enjoying it, I'm so, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you're doing it wrong yeah. especially when you get to write fun fantasy and science fiction books so yeah. i would always remind myself to enjoy what i'm doing enjoy the stories enjoy the characters mm -hmm. right and be excited about what i'm doing yeah mm -hmm. well what do you enjoy doing for fun oh what do i do for fun i like hanging out with my daughters who are both five <laughs> and so mm -hmm. we just got done uh making a puzzle uh, watching some Bluey and uh, that kind of thing. So I have a lot of fun hanging out with them. Uh huh. Writing or doing work. Mm. Are you going to write more books? Yes. In fact, uh, a Benny song two, uh, I finished it and I'm just doing edits. So hopefully that's out next year. It's called A Benny and the Kingdom of Gold. So there's Ooh, more. Ooh, a, a sort of like an. Uh, is it like an African American El Dorado? Um, more of an African El Dorado in some ways. A place called Oh, I, did I say African American? I meant African. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's like an African. Yeah, it's like an African, uh, like an El Dorado in some way, a city of gold. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, they can like like the people there can uh, spin gold, meaning they can control gold. So spin gold. Yeah, spin gold. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be in she gets the in this one, you know, in the first book, as you know, a Benny is mostly in a forest because her village is really tiny and nobody knows where her village is. She lives in nowhere. She lives in nowhere land. Right. Mm -hmm. And so and she and then she goes to another village. Book two, you're going to go to cities and you're going to see kingdoms in the much bigger world that she doesn't know because she's only been in this forest. So it's time for her to come out of the forest and like 
be in the world and that's going to be so it's gonna be really shocking for her like she's gonna go to the first time see a city and her eyes are gonna go up and up as she's looking at the building yeah she's never seen anything like this before so yeah it's gonna be a interesting time for her so and her friends uh -huh. so she's now gonna be moving to this new real world yeah she's moving into the bigger world no no longer no more just being in the forest forever but that also means things are going to get a lot more dangerous. <laughs> and about the real world, actually, I take that back. Gold City is not a real world. Fantasy world. Yeah. Yeah, the Gold City, El Dorado is a fantasy world. Yes. But this is based, I'm basing it on uh, West African and old West African empire called Mali. And they were uh -huh. known for their gold, especially. Uh -huh. It's kind of based on certain certain things. So yeah, it's based on, but it's also, yeah, it's a bring in a lot of their myth and folklore. Like this one has dragons. Ooh, well, I cannot wait to read it. When do you think it will come out? Uh, I don't want to say exactly when, but it should come out in 2024, hopefully. So I don't know when. So hopefully, I think probably like later in the year. Um, okay. But yeah, I can't wait. This, this story should have three books, so... There'll be a third book after that, which I have not written yet, but I'm making notes for. This is this is like a gold mine of books piling on me. Yeah. So uh -huh. you get at least three books out of this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, make that three amazing books. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um well, I cannot wait. As soon as that book comes out, I am going to snatch it off the shelf. Thank you. And I hope I can talk to you again about it. I hope you'll invite me back to talk about that book too. I will, for sure. I'm always right. glad to talk about books because that's <laughs> okay, like yeah. everything on my I mind. See your interviews are pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, um, thank you so much for your time.